just going to dive right into this, and it's all about trusting God's plan. And so, as most of you know, I started off in eighth grade running, and most of you know also that I love doing it. And it's not only because I get to run that I love doing it, but it's also because of the awesome teams and the awesome guys I've gotten to meet. Some of these guys are fast, and some of them not so fast, and I love that I get to run with every one of them. They're the most influential pers- people that I get to be around during my week. And I love that I get to spend miles and miles running with them, talking, hearing their stories. It's such a big thing for me. And last year, uh, during track season, I got a knee injury. Now, this knee injury may not have been the worst thing that could have happened to me, but it took a couple things that I love to do away from me. One, it took running away from me. But that wasn't my biggest hurt. My biggest hurt was taking away my teammates. I couldn't go out on a run with them or be with them all the time, and that hurt. Because these guys are so impactful to me, they not only helped me on my running career, but they also helped me on my spiritual side. So when I got this knee injury and I couldn't run with them, it hurt so bad to be in the weight room sitting there riding the stationary bike and just looking and I'm like what am I supposed to be doing in here why am I in here and I didn't know why and so I'd be in there and for the first week it might not have been so bad but then it was week after week after week and it started getting a little daunting and so I got going and one Saturday it really hit me Saturday mornings were the only ones in the building There's no janitors, no custodians, no teachers, no anything in the building. And so it's just me and my running team. Now, the rest of my guys got to go out on a nice Saturday morning run, and I couldn't go with them. I had to sit in the weight room and turn on all the lights, flip on whatever I wanted to listen to, but it never really measured up to what I would be going through with the guys. Now, It really dawned on me when I would look across the weight room from me and I'd look at myself and see, wow, I'm stuck on this stationary bike. And it hurt because I was like, God, I'm setting myself up for an awesome track season and for some reason you put me here in this weight room on the bike and I can't get out and get the miles that I need to have a good track season. And it hurt, it really did. And so I'd be angry with God, confused with God. And a couple days I'd just yell out, and I'm like, why? Why am I sitting here? I couldn't figure it out. And then after a while, I'd get this calming feeling. And I'd see, and I'd see through this, and I'd be like, hey, maybe it isn't that bad. I don't know what God's plan is, but I know there is one, and I just need to trust that it's there. You see, it's so easy for us to lose sight of God when we're trying to make our own path instead of focusing on the one that God's making for us. God's plan isn't going to be easy, but it's definitely worth it. It's like parents asking us all the time, hey, what are you going to do with your life? Where are you going to go to college? And it's such a big question because there's so many options out there today. And you're trying to find the one that God is leading you toward. So how do you find this, and where do you go from it? Because you're like, hey, this is where I'm going to go with my life. And then you kind of get this little urge, this little feeling over here like, well, maybe I should be doing this instead. And that's God pushing you. And I feel like that's why I'm up here preaching to you today. And thanks to Zach and everybody else who's helped me along my way, I get to be up here and doing a job that hopefully Jesus is uh, putting this on my heart. Now we're going to be talk. We've been talking about how to find God's plan, but how do you do it? Well, tonight we're going to be talking out of Proverbs chapter three and sixteen. Proverbs was written by Solomon, son of David, and Solomon was the wisest man on the earth. But it doesn't really help him because he also had troubles finding God at some points. I mean, during his lifetime, he had seven hundred wives and three hundred mistresses. That's a lot of girl problems, if you ask me. (laughs) But other than that, he wrote books in the Bible telling us how to find God and how God wants us to act 
and help us along the way. And we see this in chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Solomon writes for us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. That isn't easy, is it? He's saying trust in Him through the good and the bad. Trust in the Lord through your work. You need to give your life to Him in your heart. You need to give your actions, your words, and your thought. And trust that God has the best plan for you that you can have. Now part two of this verse, lean not on your own understanding. Solomon is saying once you trust God with all your heart, you then need to give up your way of thinking and trust that God knows best. You need to know that whatever your plan is, it's not going to be near as good. Because God is perfect. And so his plan for you is going to be perfect. Because God never fails. And so if he has a plan for you, it's never going to fail. Trust God through your work. Now I've said this a couple times, trusting God through your work. But what does that even mean? Well, we need to define what your work is. Work can be many things. And no, I'm not just talking about a job. I'm not talking about when you get home, mom telling you to do the dishes or do your laundry. I'm talking about all your actions, all your words and your thoughts. You need to give those up to God. You can do anything, but it just has to be for God. Verse 6 goes hand in hand with verse 5. Now, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your, on your own understandings. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Solomon keeps saying this over and over. First, trust in, the, trust in God with your work and trust that he knows best. It's kind of like, I know this story very well. It's kind of like when you're sitting in class and your friends are like, hey, let's go mess around. And you're like, oh yeah, that sounds really fun. And you get this little urge like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this today. And you're like, oh no, it'll be fun, it'll be fun. And you, you're like, no, I don't think I want to. And so you don't. And you sit back and your friends get in big trouble. So you see that God doesn't put you in bad situations. He's going to help you out. Second, don't lean on your plan, but focus on God's. Relating back to my story earlier about my need, I had to trust because I, didn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't make my knee injury go away magically. I had to trust that God's plan was the right one and that at some point it was going to work out. I didn't know how at that time, but I had to trust at some point it would. And third and finally, submit to God. When I gave my life to God, it was an amazing step. And every day, I know it was the right one. Solomon is putting these steps first to truly know the purpose that God has on your life. He's saying, once you give your life and work to Him, then He will make your path straight. Trust God with your life and in everything you do. Trust God through your work, and He will make your path straight. Once this happens, he will show you how to use his plans. Chapter 16, verse 3, re-emphasizes this. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. There's that word, work, again. Commit yourself to the Lord, and you commit your work. Then God's plan for you will establish itself. In other words, God's plan for you will show itself. Now, work for all of us can mean a lot of things. And my work is going to be different than your work or your work. Now, my work, I like to use my running, as I said. But I also like to uh, ride horses and preach and talk to God about what I like to do. Now, all these things are work. Because it's not only just your actions. It's how you talk to your friends about your faith. It's how you talk to your teachers when they tell you to do a direction. It can be so many different things. You just need to give your life to God. So how do we take this home and what does it all mean? Well, first, you need to give your heart and your life to Him. This isn't going to be an easy step. 
So if you need some help or have any other questions, go to Doug or Zach. They're amazing and they know what they're talking about. Second, you need to commit your work to God. You need to commit everything you do, think, and say. And lastly, you need to trust that God has a plan. And at some point, not on your timeline, but on God's timeline, it'll show itself. You need to trust that God's plan will never fail. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be easy at all, but it's definitely going to be worth it. God's plan is perfect and will take care of you, and he will never fail on you. Because the God of the universe is for you and not against you. So he won't ever fail you. Hey guys, thanks for watching today.